All right, so far in class, you can see that we've done fantasy landscapes, we've done collage creatures. Soon we will have uh, uploaded creatures in our landscapes, right? Assignment four, we're gonna use our compositing skills in a different way. We're basically gonna use it not for content, but for textures and colors, kind of as paint. And we're going to do what I call a cloud creature. So we have beautiful skies right now. You know, the storms come and go. And you'll see we have big, big clouds, big skies in Texas. And every once in a while, you'll look up at the sky and a cloud will suggest a creature to you, right? It will look like a bunny rabbit, look like a dragon. It will look like a porcupine, whatever it is. So what you're going to do is take, come on, work with me. You're going to take um, the creature you, you designed for assignment two, and you are going to recreate them as a believable cloud, right? So this was kind of a bear design. Man, it is just not liking me. I think because a lot of you guys are uploading. So I'm going to do this. These are past instructor examples. You'll see lots of different past examples with students. And it all depends on the types of clouds that you're using. So here, this is something I like to do now. I'll put a little copy of my creature design in the corner, right? So you can see how the cloud is meant to suggest this creature. And it's a fun way to show in your portfolio that you are able to composite from existing textures. So how do we do it? It's actually not too difficult. You are not allowed to paint in this project, but we are going to be allowed to do a gradated background. So we will be painting our first pixels, but just as a gradation for the sky. Otherwise, we need to find cloud reference. So we go to Google Images. And luckily, the cloud reference is growing all the time. But I want them to be large enough to print. So we go to Tools, and I want a size, just like for our creature, I want 8 megapixels or larger. Okay. Now you'll see all kinds of different clouds. You don't want to use any reference that's completely desaturated. Right? You can always change the color, but if there is no color, you can't change the color. And my creature is, is a bird. It's got lots of textures to it. So I might like these kind of cumulus clouds that have a lot of texture. The problem with using really dramatic storm clouds is then all of your clouds need to be kind of dramatic storm clouds. But that can work. Again, you can look in past student examples. This one has a strong core shadow. So be mindful of the lighting. Your cloud should mostly be lit from overhead because that's how clouds are lit. <laughs> that's where the sun is. And this is just reminding you how to select ref reference. So I want you to have at least five different clouds. And the way you search it, you open link in new tab when you find it. And then you open the image in a new tab to actually see if it's good quality. So that one is not. Open image in new tab, because it could be a remnant. Ah, uh, that is good quality. So I'll, I'll keep that one. Start my cloud folder. The nice thing is you don't need the clouds to be particularly well shaped or <laughs> anything. You just need them to be colored and, and well lit. And if you're looking for texture, that they have texture. And you need them to be large enough.
because we're going to be using clone stamp a lot. We're going to be using smudge tool. We're going to be compositing with cloud material. The cloud is our palette and we'll be painting with it. But the first cloud we're going to use, oh, that automatically downloaded for me. The first cloud we're going to use as our cookie dough. We're just going to roll it out, make it really large. So this might be a good one to do with that. And we're going to just, just like we've used that analogy of rolling out the dough and then using a cookie cutter to get the shape of our creature, we're going to cut out our creature out of cloud. And that's just the first step. That's all I wanted to show you today. Just like assignment three, it requires a good cutout of your creature. <laughs> so that's important that your assignment two is, is, has a nice clean silhouette. See, so I've got five references there. That's enough to get started. I can always add more later. Maybe I'll get a sixth one. This looks like it's not gonna be big enough. Nope, all right. Now careful of like the really weird cloud photos you find, unless you can somehow keep that consistency with your reference. Oh, here's a nice generic one. All right. Ah, so many of these have lost their, their oversized image. This one looks, this one looks like Nice view from a plane. There we go. All right. So I've got enough references now. So what do I do? I am going to open up assignment two. And I'm going to open up my PSD. This is my latest best version, right? This is what we pulled from for assignment three to pull our creature into our landscape. But this time, I'm going to change it into assignment four, our cloud creature assignment. And so what I do is I'm going to erase every other layer besides my creature, right? It's already composed. I might decide to grow the canvas size a little bit before I start adding reference. So I'll make it 16 by 20. Then I'm going to shrink my creature a little bit on there. Maybe tilt it a little bit. Again, you can pose your creature if you want. Uh, let's shrink a little bit. I want the whole cloud, the whole creature to be represented. And it needs to be at least 300 pixels per inch by 8 by 10. But I'm doing 16 by 20 by, by 350 pixels per inch. And I can even do edit puppet warp and pose my creature a little bit. So you don't need to just make the cloud match exactly what um, your creature is. You can actually pose it to make it a little bit more suggestive, if you like, of what a cloud is like. But it still needs to suggest your creature. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. These, these verticals don't quite work. Right? So maybe something like that. Now, does that still look like my creature? Yes. Okay. I'm going to make a copy of that, and I'm going to shrink that down into the corner. So I always have a copy of what I'm trying to suggest with my cloud. Okay, now I'm going to bring in really big overall cloud reference. So I can start with this really... dark, moody, core shadowed one. I can grow it, take its opacity down a little bit to make sure it covers up my creature fully. I can transform it, grow it, stretch it, but I don't want to rotate it. I don't want to change the direction of the lighting of the cloud reference. It's okay to really enlarge clouds because they're soft textures anyway. 
So the computer softens them a little bit, but we're going to be making them our own. Then I'm going to rasterize it. If you remember that. Notice that my cloud completely covers my creature. Okay, now here's the important step. I'm going to use the magic wand, select the empty space around my creature layer, have contiguous turned off so that any little empty shapes are, are selected. Then I'm going to say select inverse. So now it selects all the area that is my creature. This is like the cookie cutter. Then I can turn that creature layer off and I'm left with the cookie cutter selection. Then I turn on my cloud layer and I hit command J and it cuts out my creature out of that cloud. Now that looks okay, but because of all the gray and stuff, it, it doesn't look like a cloud yet. So let me try another big reference, not that storm cloud one. So let's do this one, actually this one. So I'm just repeating the steps so you can see how it works. Grow that nice and big, large enough so it covers your creature. Right? And then move it so that it covers your creature. Stretch it if you need to. So now I've rolled out enough cloud dough to cover my whole cookie cutter. Then go to your creature layer, use the magic wand, select the empty space with contiguous turned off. Then select inverse, so it's everything that's not empty. Then move that selection to your cloud layer and hit Command J to cut it out. Okay, that looks a little bit better, would you guys agree, than this? As a place to start to build clouds up with. All right, so now what do I do? I need to build a background sky. So I'm gonna make a new blank layer at the back and for the first time, we are going to use a paint tool in this class. So we're not just copying pixels, we're not just erasing pixels, we're not just selecting pixels, we're actually going to be creating our own pixels. The, the most basic paint tool are the brushes, but we're not using those. We're gonna use the paint bucket. Now, the most basic way, and you're allowed to do this, is to just use the paint bucket and then select a color blue in your foreground color selector, and then just paint your background solid blue. That looks fine, right? But it looks kind of flat. It actually is a nightmare to print because if there's any clogs in the print heads, a solid color like that will show them off. So we wanna maybe have a gradient because you'll notice even our simplest clouds, the blue varies a little bit. It's lighter here, darker here. So underneath the paint bucket, we have what's called a gradient tool. And we're gonna use that for the first time. When you use the gradient tool, you'll see this little gradient slider in your toolbar. You open that up and I want you to just pick one doesn't matter which one it is, double click on it and you can select different colors. So I'm gonna go from a dark blue, say okay, to a light blue. Maybe that light blue is a little bit more greenish. Say okay, I can even add a color in there. So the gradient tool, you can use the presets to get started but it's fully customizable. Oh, I like that and I can move it around. Yeah, I think that works. Maybe I'll darken this one a little bit. And this can always be changed later. This is just a background, okay? Once you have a gradient you like, this is how you use the gradient tool. On normal settings at 100%, the first option there, it's a linear gradient. I'm gonna start at the top, drag at an angle to the bottom, and I get a gradient, right? Softly transitions those colors together. I can go the opposite way, so it's lighter on top, darker at the bottom, whatever you think works. And if you want to get really fancy, you can make a duplicate layer, Command J, and you can run it in different angles at different proportions and then use opacity to overlap them on each other and get something that really looks like a believable sky. Those are the only components I need you to have so far. Then you can start bringing extra clouds in. And from these extra clouds, we'll build up, we'll burn them, we'll dodge them, we'll clone stamp them, we'll make it into a cloud creature.